Hello, welcome back. Uh, we were just talking about some of the different <coughs> things that we all do, and Eric uh, has some interesting traditions. Eric's background, like a lot of the folks in the Pagan and Wiccan community, is uh, from the Christian, we were raised Christian or raised Catholic, and uh, Eric has a very interesting tradition that he wants to tell us about. Well, the first few years that um, I was alive to celebrate Christmas, never, um, never really had a white Christmas. I always spent it in the Caribbean with family down in Puerto Rico uh, on the beaches. So Santa was uh, not a real well-known personality type. The tradition that we did as far as the gift exchange goes, uh, again, doesn't really deal with the gifts of Jesus or giving gifts to Jesus but it dealt with um, what the little kids would do is uh, collect water and grass for the camels for the three kings on their journey. And as they passed through, in thanks for their sustenance, they gave a gift back. Neat, that's really neat. What a neat idea. Well, we have um, our holiday is <laughs> <laughs> usually really crazy <laughs> because we do have um, three young ones that we're uh, kind of helping to guide along on their paths. So it gets yeah. a little bit crazy. And They're when getting older and the guidance is getting a little less. <laughs> and it's getting to be a little bit easier for us to just kind of sit back and relax. When they were small, it was being up until five o'clock in the morning, wrapping gifts and getting, if we were lucky, a half an hour of sleep before they were up going, oh, oh, look, look, look what's here, look what's here. Now it's a little bit more relaxed. Um, what we do celebrate for Yule is um, usually we try to do something different like visit the solstice chambers or we try to have a quiet evening at home and just relax, light the candles, listen to some music, admire the tree, kind of be together and spend time with friends and family, um, enjoy, our, enjoy ourselves, talk about things that we've done over the year, um, plans that we have for the coming year, things that we want to do in the spring and the summer. Um, we talk about some of the events that we're going to be going to and some of the things that people we're going to see and the things that we want to do there. And it just, it's a very relaxed time for us, which I think is very important. A lot of us, even pagan and Wiccan folk, get caught up in the craziness of the season um, with everybody running around and all kinds of traffic jams and all it's, that. It's really fun to be able to go out to some of the stores and, and you're watching some of these folks it's supposed to be a happy, joyous time of year, mm -hmm. and they are at the worst and the crabbiest <laughs> and the nastiest <laughs> that you oh, see wow. all year long. I skipped shopping this year. But Kate and I have some fun with it because we usually have sweatshirts that are all decorated for the holidays. And I have this maroon western type hat that I wear that I put candy canes in the, <laughs> in the brim. And we've kind of made it a, a tradition every year where we'll go out and we'll walk through the malls, and if one of the little ones has enough gumption to elbow, elbow his mother or father and go, hey, look at that guy's hat, we'll end up turning around and giving him a candy cane or giving the parents a candy cane. And the look on their faces is priceless. You, could, <laughs> you couldn't have given them anything more worthwhile in their life. It's just somebody took a second to stop the craziness and get back to what it's about and just have fun and smile and just, you know, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays and go on with it and calm everybody down a little. It's really fun. And I think that's where a lot of our focus probably should be as pagans and Wiccans. It is kind of a crazy time for our Christian friends. Um, we know that and we try to keep them relaxed and calm and provide some entertainment for them. Um, we also try to help folks out and if we go into a store and we're buying some things and the cashier is a little bit crazed or harried or having a really bad day because the customer in front of her just kind of took her head off. <laughs> we usually try to give them candy canes too. Uh, the last time that we, uh, the first time we did that this, this year actually it wasn't little ones that noticed Frank's hat. It was uh, a couple of was women behind us who yeah. were shopping saying, wow, look at those candy canes. And of course we have all different flavors so we have to give out all of our different flavors to everybody. What flavor would you like? They make them in a lot of really nice flavors now, which is really terrific. <laughs> but we also try to remind the kids that it's a crazy time of year and everything gets very, very commercial this time of year. And we have cut back tremendously. It's and it's better. really mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> yeah. We're not hectic, we're not crazy, we're not facing 15 hours of crazed, horrendous, Power out of control, <laughs> power shopping, followed by 87 hours of crazed, out of control, power wrapping. 
<laughs> we're just kind of relaxed and having a good time and the kids are looking forward to spending the holiday with us instead of watching us bop back and forth in the car and running here and running there and running to the other place. We'd enjoy anyone's thoughts that's out there that's listening too if they wanted to call in and share some of their experiences for the holiday. It would be it would be nice to hear some other folks' ideas. Absolutely. So feel free to call in and express your views on the holiday. Absolutely. We uh, we know it's a kind of a crazy night and we know that people are busy and they're baking and they're shopping and uh, trying to wrap gifts and um, trying to get things ready. I'll confess to all of you, our Yule tree is up, the mm -hmm. lights are on it, and if it wasn't for our kids, there would be no ornaments on it at all this year. <laughs> well, it was <laughs> nice. It was <laughs> nice. They managed <laughs> to get you. the Daffy Duck up. Yes, they got the Daffy Duck up. <laughs> um, that is one of the things that we do really enjoy about the holiday is putting up our Yule tree and looking back at the memories from our combined childhoods, not only mine and my husband's, but from our children's too, and friends that we've known that have given us ornaments to put on the tree and uh, people who are here, people who are no longer with us, but on the other side of the veil and gifts that they've given us. We kind of remember them too. There's a lot of, a lot of people who join with us at this time of year, which is really, really terrific. We had a very nice dinner. Um, for Yule dinner, I went across the street to Miss Liz's house, who is our neighbor. Um, and we had a very nice dinner with about eight people who showed up. And we actually had some people from the other side visit us during dinner. There were things knocking around in our house, and we're like, OK, well, we want to listen to you. So we gave them about 10 minutes, where we just sat and we listened for them. And a couple people came out and spoke. Um, some people got some nice visits from past ones that were just saying Happy Yule and Happy Christmas and we had both religions, everybody, didn't matter who you were, was invited to the house and we had a wonderful time. It was great. That's part of the thing we're trying to do because even though, even though we'll sit here as pagans or Wiccans or whatever tradition you want to follow, you're still dealing with the outside world and the whole thing is we don't need to be running around with a blazing pinnacle in the middle of your forehead saying, you're three days late and this isn't the real meaning of the holiday. It's just, you know, <laughs> you don't need to uh, alienate all these different people in one fell swoop. I mean, you know, if you go out and you just smile at them and bring them some joy, I think you're doing a lot more for the community as a whole instead of going out and maybe having a rally go down Main Street saying, you know, Santa Claus isn't really Santa Claus. Um, <laughs> it's not going to help out anything at all and it's much better to go out and make friends and give away that candy cane and a little bit of sweetness for the holiday instead of just you know getting caught up in it. Exactly thing. I agree from for myself a uh, majority of the people that I'm really close with are not pagan do not follow Yule as opposed to Christmas. Yeah. Yule for me is pretty much a very inner reflective mm -hmm. holiday yeah. it's a time that yeah. you start to select the seeds that you're going to nurture and grow and plant in the spring it's time to figure out what you've been through and where you're going to take it. And so I do all my celebrating at Christmas with everybody else yeah. and nobody has a problem with the, you know, with me being there and, and that's what the holiday is about. I mean, we're celebrating, we're getting together and we're doing fun things and we're having a good time. Now let's face it, pagans know how to party. Yep. That is the oh, one yes. thing we do really well. We do food mm -hmm. and we do party really, really well. So we have our own party three or four <laughs> days before everybody else has their Christmas. And then right. we have our <laughs> party a few days after Christmas <laughs> because you know. let's not let any of this good time go to waste. Oh. And it is, it is a great time. And New Year's is New Year's. I heard, I heard a story on, um, on the news. A woman who, we have. oh, I think we have a phone call, so I'll get to my story in a few minutes. Hello, caller. Happy Yule. Happy Yule. Um, it's wonderful to see everyone on, on the show. It looks really good. And um, I have a question about uh, uh, the Yule tree, also known as a Christmas tree. Um, it, because it's a nature-based religion, what does it mean when you cut down all those trees to put them in your house? I mean, is that kind of a contradiction? Uh, yes, you're absolutely. Whoops, you have a little bit of feedback, so I'm going to ask you to turn down your TV. Thank you. Um, yes, it is. And uh, a lot of us do live trees, which are live trees with the root ball intact. Um, or we do artificial trees which are not nearly as good. But this way, we, if we have a live tree with a root ball, we get to plant it, which I is a wonderful thing. I have another question, too. Uh, do you know what the actual month was when Christ was born? Because I, I know it was not in December. No, in it August. wasn't in December. And part of the problem with the whole controversy of when was he really born has to do with the fact that the calendar has changed. 
Uh, Pope Julian, it wasn't convenient for him to have the calendar the way it was, so he decided to change it. That was his little pet project, and that's why we have the calendar that we have today, which is the Julian calendar. He thought it made much more sense, it was more logical. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but they are really not sure whether Christ was born in the spring, which is a real possibility, sometime in March. Um, there's also talk of September, which seems to be the more popular theory, that he was born sometime actually in December, that he's actually a Virgo. Um, so it's kind of, we're not really sure when he was born, um, but at any rate, the date is off by about four years, and it's also off by several months. So when people talk about 4 BC, he was actually probably there. I um, <laughs> we're not really sure. It's kind of a tough call to make. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for calling. Have a good day. holiday. One, so. of the things, one, of the, one of the things that I wanted to tell people is there was a woman, we're talking about the craziness of the season, there was a woman who was talking about how she and her husband and her three or four children and their dog pile into their car from Tennessee and drive from Tennessee to Indiana and visit about 12 people in a, in a three-day period of time. And this is how this woman spends her holidays. There's something drastically wrong with this idea. <laughs> I mean, it's great to visit friends and family, and it's great to be with, with people around the holidays, but frankly, what we really need to do yeah. is I think we have another phone call. relax Hello? and have Hel fun and answer this call. Hello, caller. Hi. Um, what I'm really curious about is how you left, um, I'm sure, I'm not really sure, but I'm just imagining that most of you had a traditional religion um, at one point, and how you or how you happen to separate yourself from that uh, traditional religion, and also how did your family uh, take this new stance that you adopted, and how you could withstand the pressure that maybe your family and neighbors have? That's uh, a really, really that's, good question. That's a, thank, thank you. you for that's a real for good question, that. and I think you're probably right. Most of us, we're still getting feedback. Most of us were probably raised um, either Catholic or Roman Catholic or had some kind of Christian upbringing. And as you go along in that upbringing, somewhere along the way, you start to get told your catechism classes. <laughs> and there's certain things in there <laughs> that if you're really thinking and you're taking phys ed and catechism, the virgin birth thing starts to make you wonder how all this could happen. And you start to question different things. And they, the answer you'd get is basically, well, it's a mystery. You just have to believe it. I have a problem with that, and I always <laughs> did, even as a youngster in school, and I spent a lot of days down at the principal's office trying to explain what I was trying to get to when I was disrupting the class. Um, as far as family goes, well, when they notice you're not going to midnight mass anymore, or maybe you're not going to a high mass on Good Friday, um, or whichever other temple or church or, or grove you're participating in, they begin to wonder where you are. Um, and you tell them whichever way you want. And some of them have written us off. And we've taken that kind of pressure, and that's a decision you make, because you've got to be happy with yourself and where you're going and what you're living. Um, that's one of the things we do. Kate and I run a conference called CraftWise, and that is a real nutty type thing, because we try to bring together people from every different tradition and practice that we can find, and we get them all under one roof. And you want to talk about a flammable mixture, that could be a major explosion. And the funny thing is, when you get the different pagan paths together, for most part, they can talk once they get past, I'm Alexandrian, I'm Gardnerian, I'm this, I'm that, I practice to the north, to the east, or whichever way you want to go first. Once you get past that and you realize that we're all doing the same thing, whether you're Jewish and going to temple, whether you're Catholic and going to mass, whatever it is, uh, if you're going to the Wailing Wall, I mean, my respect to anybody who can go and pound their head on the wall and pray and more power to them if they're reaching their God that way. Um, but there's a lot of different things involved. You have to find your own way and be happy with yourself.